Okay, welcome back. This is Mr. Hassan's Math Channel. And this is question number six from the June 2022 International A-Level Pure Mathematics P4 paper. This question here is about vectors. And they told us that relative to a fixed origin O, the point A has position vector I minus 4J plus 3K, which I like to write as column vectors, minus 4J plus 3K. And the point B has position vector 5i plus 3j minus 2k. That's 5, 3, and negative 2. And the point C has position vector 3i plus pj minus k. So 3p and minus k, minus 1, sorry, minus 1k. That's what that means, uh, where p is a constant. The line L passes through the points A and B. Find a vector equation for the line L. Now, the vector equation of a line is made up of two parts. You have one part, which is like, um, let me just call it a different letter for now, just to make it less confusing. Um, one part, which is the um, position vector of any point on the line, plus a scalar times another part, which is the direction of the line. This part stands for the position vector any point on that line, and this part stands for the direction of the line itself. And that will take us to any place on the line. It's kind of like y equals mx plus c, where you have, uh, you know, the direction of the line is like the gradient. And the x is like a variable, which when that changes, where you are on the line changes. And the p is uh, the point on the line in, in, this, in y equals mx plus c. It's like the y-intercept. In this case, is any point on the line. So basically, when you have your origin, you have the position vector of... So here's your line, for example. This represents the vector that takes you from the origin to the line. And then this q represents something that's you know in the direction of the line. And lambda, as lambda changes where you are on the line changes but this will take this will take you along the line somewhere so for example when lambda is zero you're going to be at this point here when lambda is one you'll be at this point when lambda is two you'll be at that point lambda is minus one you'll be at that point so this will take you everywhere along the line depending on what value of lambda you choose okay so that's the idea between the vector equation of a straight line okay it tells you this part tells you how to get to the line this part tells you how to move along the line along with the lambda. That'll tell you how far along you have to move and in which direction. Okay, so that's basically the idea between be, behind the vector equation of a straight line. So what we need to know is two things. We need to have the direction of the line and we need to know a point on the line. Okay, so they told us the line passes through the points A and B. So we have actually two points on the line. These are two points on the line. We can choose one of them. But we also have to know the direction of the line, which would be the vector that takes us, for example, from A to B. So if we make a little diagram first, say this is our origin. Say this is A, and let's say this is B. Okay, so this is our origin. This is the point A, and this is the point B. Okay, so we're going to have... Um, let me just make that a bit thinner. So this is the vector from O to A. This is the vector from O to B. Okay, so this is the vector from O to A. This is the vector from O to B. So this is the vector that we have here, which is 1 minus 4, 3. And this is the vector that we have here, which is 5, 3, negative 2. Okay, now we need to write down the vector equation of the, sl of the straight line, which is to say is equal to any position on the line. So now I can write down in this place... I can write down the position vector of A, which is 1, negative 4, and 3. Or I could write down the position vector of B. I could write down 5, 3, negative 2. Either of those two, which are on the line, I can use as the position vector of a point on the line. I'll just choose A, it doesn't matter, plus some scalar times. And this is going to be, this is a variable which changes according to where we want to be on the line. This is what we have to have, the direction of the line. Now, if I join A and B together, okay, this is, this would be the line L that passes through A and B. So this is the line L, it passes through A and B. Now, if I find the vector from A to B, that will be the direction of, uh, you know, the direction of the line. Okay, it'll be the direction of the line. So I have to put here 
a vector representing the direction of the line. So I could find B to A, if I can find A to B, both of them would be fine, as long as they're parallel to this line. Could be in either direction. So let's say we're trying to find the vector from A to B. Now A to B, if I want to go from A to B, I've got to go from A to O plus O to B. Now A to O is like minus OA plus OB, which is the same as saying O to B minus O to A. Same thing. Okay, you can think about it as you want to go from A to B. Okay, um, you're going to go from um, O to B minus, you want to go from A to B, you're going to, you're going to go O to B, which is like there, minus O to A. It's going to be parallel to that and that. Okay, so you're going to get from A to B. Okay, you can say minus OA plus OB. Now, so we know that O to B is this vector here, 5, 3, negative 2. And we know that O to A is this vector here, which is 1, negative 4, 3. So we can say that the, our vector from A to B is therefore 5 minus 1, which is 4, 3 minus minus 4, which is 3 plus 4, which is 7, and negative 2 minus 3, which is minus 5. So that's the vector from A to B. Okay, so I just have to write that in here. Okay, that's 4, 7, and negative 5. So there we have the vector equation of the line. Let's just write it in the form that they gave us a question in, in terms of i, j, and k. So I, I like to write them as column vectors for my calculations. I find it way easier to do. But in my final answer, I'll write it in the same kind of format that they gave it to us. So we're going to have i minus 4j plus 3k plus lambda times 4i plus 7j minus 5k. Okay, just written in the same form that they gave us, and that's the answer. If we wrote it left in that form, it will be perfectly fine as well. Just um, I like to write it back in the original form, although I prefer this form way, way more in terms of calculating. So I could have, as I said, written this as 5, 3, 5i plus 3j minus 2k plus that same vector, or I could have the vector the other way around. I could have put plus minus 4i minus 7j plus 5k or any multiple of this vector fine you know i can as long as i have a point on the line as the position vector part from o to that point and i have any vector which is parallel to this line either going one way or the other that those will count as vector equations of the line because any value of lambda will take you to a point only on this line because if you go from O to A, you'll end up on the line. And if you're going parallel to this, you'll end up somewhere on the line, depending on what the value of this lambda is. So if you put B as your position vector, you'll end up on the line. And then if whether you put you know, this direction vector going this way or that way or any multiple of this, you'll end up on the line somewhere for any values that you choose for the scalar. So that's why um, that's how you write the vector equation of a straight line or a vector equation. That's why it says a vector equation because it's not just one form. You can write um, different variations of it. Okay, now for part B, it says given that A to C is perpendicular to the line L, find the value of P, okay, which is this unknown uh, constant here. So it says A to C is perpendicular to L. So let me just use the same diagram and draw a little line which is perpendicular to A. Uh, perpendicular to the line L going from A. So this would be A to C. Okay, they told us that A to C is perpendicular to the line L. So this is a right angle here. Okay, and it says here, find the value of P. Okay, so now, I know when two vectors are perpendicular, the dot product of those two vectors is equal to zero if A is perpendicular to B. I know that for sure. Two vectors are perpendicular, then you multiply them together using the dot product, you get zero, okay? So let's say the vector A is A to C, A to, uh, let's say A to B, um, yeah, A to B, okay, which is line L, uh, the direction of line L, and vector B is A to C. Okay, A to B is along the line L, so it's, it's the direction of line L, and A to C is the line which is perpendicular to that, okay? So what we can do now is we can say that the vector from A to B, which we have here, 4, 7, minus 5, times the vector from A to C. Now, we need to find what the vector A to C is first. Okay, now A to C, in the same way that we found 
um, A to B. We can find A to C in the same kind of logic. We know A to C is O is like a minus O A plus O C. Okay, so it's going to be basically O C minus O A. O C minus O A. So we can say that the vector from A to C is equal to O to C minus O to A. So let's calculate that. We know that O to C is this vector here, 3P minus 1. So this is going to be 3P minus 1. Take away the vector from O to A, which we know is 1, negative 4, 3. So we can say that that gives us 3 minus 1, which is 2, P plus 4, which is P plus 4, and 1 minus, th minus 1 minus 3, which is negative 4. So that's a vector from A to C. This is A to C. So this times A to C, which is 2, and P plus 4 and minus 4 has to give us 0. So therefore, we can say the dot product is found by multiplying the I components together, adding to that the product of the J components, so 7 times P plus 4, add to that the product of the K components, which is minus 4 times minus 5, which is, minus, which is plus 20, and that must equal 0. The dot product is zero. Now the only unknown is the p here. So we have a plus 7p plus 28 plus 20 is equal to zero. So we're left with 7p plus, that's 28 plus 28, which is 56, is equal to zero. So 7p equals negative 56. So p is equal to negative 56 over seven, which is negative eight. So p equals negative eight. That is the value of p in this question. So that's how we've dealt with part A and part B of this question. Now we're going to go on to part C. Okay, now for part C, it says hence, means using what we've just found, find the area of triangle ABC, giving your answer as a third in its simplest form. So we've got to focus on this triangle ABC. Uh, what I can do here is the triangle ABC is this triangle here. Oops. One second. This is the triangle we have to focus on. Okay. So this triangle here we see is a right angle triangle. And we can see that to find the area of this triangle, we simply have to use the, the, the area of triangle ABC is going to be found by half times the base times the height. We can think of AB as the base and AC as the height if we want. So if we know the length of AB and the length of AC, we can find the area of the triangle. Okay, so the base is equal to the magnitude of the vector from A to B. Okay, and the height is equal to the magnitude of the vector A to C. Okay, if we find those two things, we can find the area of the triangle and we have to give the answer in simplest third form. So now, the, to find the magnitude of a vector, the length of the vector, we just take each of the components, square them, and add them together. We don't have to worry about the sign, because it's going to become positive when you square it anyway. Okay, so that's 4 squared plus 7 squared plus 5 squared. Now, this A to C is going to actually be 2. Now, we know P is negative 8, so negative 8 plus 4 is negative 4, negative 4. So that's the actual... Uh, magnitude of vector or the actual vector a to c the magnitude would be 2 squared plus 4 squared plus 4 squared that's going to give us 16 plus 25 plus 49 so you have um, the square root of 16 plus 49 plus 25 that gives us 3 root 10 and this gives us 4 plus 16 plus 16, that's 32 plus 436. Square root of 36 is 6. Just to make sure, we've got the square root of 4 plus 16 plus 16. 4 squared is 16, right? That gives us 6, that's right. So therefore, we can say that the area, the area of triangle ABC is a half times... 3 root 10 times 6, that cancels with the 6, give you 3, 3 times 3 is 9, so it's 9 times root 10 units squared. Okay, there's the answer to part C, and that concludes question number 6 from the June 2022 P4 paper. Other questions from this particular paper can be found 
by clicking on the link that will appear in this region over here. To find um, other questions to do with vectors from P4, you can find the link over here at the end of the video. And you can click on the link in the middle here to subscribe to my channel. Thank you for watching and see you soon.